Hi, this video is going to cover the Impedance Converter app, which is available in the App Store. Impedance Converter allows you to convert between various representations of impedance, be it regular polar or rectangular form, or an equivalent circuit form, or even a Smith chart view. And furthermore, as you edit the impedance representations in the app, all the other views are updated in a live fashion. My good friend Alan Wolke, W2AEW, has given permission to refer to a couple of the videos that he has on YouTube covering Smith charts. And he goes through all the details. You should really watch those videos because he's an expert in the subject and does a great job of explaining how Smith charts actually work. And what I'm going to essentially be doing is running through the same calculations that Alan does in his videos in the Impedance Converter app and showing that they both come up with the same answers. So Impedance Converter has views that can be either enabled or disabled. So the first thing we're going to do is go into Settings and disable the Equivalent Circuit view and enable the Cursor Controls and the Reference Impedance view. Smith charts typically show normalized impedance, and Impedance Converter takes care of this for you by showing and plotting impedance values relative to a reference impedance of 50 ohms. Uh, but that value is configurable in this cell here. So as Alan is showing here, one of the set of curves in a Smith chart are circles of constant resistance. Uh, an impedance converter, you can enable uh, a cursor for a circle of constant resistance by enabling a toggle on the left. And then that cursor, if you will, is uh, live and follows you as you drag the impedance around the Smith chart. Okay, now let's move back to the reference impedance by entering in 50 ohms for the resistance and 0 ohms for the reactance. And now you'll see that we've moved back to the reference impedance point. Uh, now, if you change the impedance to some larger value than 50, let's say if we put in 100 ohms, you'll see that the impedance moves towards the right. Uh, and then if you enter an even larger value, let's say 100 kilo ohms, uh, you'll see that the impedance moves towards the limit of infinite impedance, uh, an open circuit on the right-hand side of the Smith chart. And conversely, if you enter, say, 10 ohms, you'll move towards the left-hand side of the impedance chart. Uh, and as Alan's showing you, if you go all the way to zero, um, you'll ultimately end up on the complete left-hand side, which is the closed circuit part of the Smith chart. So as Alan's showing here, the Smith chart also shows arcs of constant reactance. Uh, and we can set the impedance converter app to show the line of constant reactance that intersects the current impedance point. And that's also a live view that you can move around in the Smith chart. OK, now I'm going to re-enable the equivalent circuit view so we can see the capacitance and inductance. And note that as Alan is showing you, when you're in the top half of the Smith chart, the reactive component of the impedance is positive, And that's associated with being inductive. And conversely, when you're in the bottom half, the reactive component is negative, And that's associated with being capacitive. Note that Impedance Converter also has kind of a snap to grid feature that allows you to drag along a line of constant resistance. And here you can see that the resistance R is not changing as I drag it back and forth. Um, or also you can do a line of constant reactance. And here you can see that the reactance value X is not changing as I drag it back and forth. So if you look closely, you might be able to see the little traces that uh, are left as I tap around in the Smith chart. And I'm going to increase the trace persistence to long to make those easier to see. Uh, now as I tap around, they'll stick around for a little bit longer and you can see them. Uh, and I can also change the trace to be infinitely long. I'll do that next. Um, and this is good if you want to like basically do a sweep of any particular parameter. And you can use this to mimic like what Alan's going to show with the VNA, where you're tracing over or sweeping over frequency in the VNA. OK, so in this part of the video, Alan sets up a load, which involves a series capacitance uh, with a resistance. And he's going to do it at 300 kilohertz to 1 megahertz in the VNA. So I put in 300 kilohertz in the impedance converter app. Uh, I'm going to put in 50 ohms, because that's the resistance that Alan's using. And the capacitance is between 70 and 80 picofarads. I'm going to put in 75 picofarads. Uh, and with that in place, then if I switch the frequency to, let's see, I think it went up to 10 megahertz, then that will cause, because we have an infinite trace, uh, it'll cause the sweep to kind of appear in the Smith chart in the app. And you, if you compare, and if you compare with 
a uh, circuit that Alan built in his video and we hooked it up to his VNA, you get the same kind of behavior where um, the, the trace moves downwards capacitively uh, as you crank up the frequency when you're generating the sweep. So next, Alan proceeds to show what happens if you change the capacitance. Uh, he has a vari variable capacitor. Uh, impedance converter can trace any, any change in any parameter, not just frequency like a VNA would do. Uh, so let's just sweep out the capacitance by setting it to 75 na nanofarads. And then you can see this produces a trace similar to what Alan produces when he cranks up the capacitance and traces it with his VNA. Uh, the important thing being illustrated here is that what we're really changing is the reactance, uh, which is a function of both frequency and capacitance. Um, and that's being done while the resistance is being kept at 50 ohms. Now at this point, Alan uh, switches in his inductor. So let's uh, sweep to half a microhenry to uh, imitate what Alan's doing with his setup. Um, you'll see we get a trace that looks just like Alan's. And in fact, let's just change the Smith chart grid lines to make it look exactly like Alan's VNA. Um, and uh, again, we're, we're directly tracing a change in reactance uh, in impedance converter. But with this, let's switch the um, the setup so that we trace between 300 kilohertz to 10 megahertz to more faithfully represent represent a sweep in frequency, just like the VNA is doing. So in the previous demonstration that Alan was showing, it involved a series equivalent circuit. Um, but next, as Alan shows, if you want to work with a parallel or a shunt circuit, uh, sometimes it's desirable to work in terms of admittance instead of uh, impedance. Uh, and in, in Alan's video, he shows you can flip the uh, Smith chart 180 degrees to get to an admittance view. Uh, and in impedance converter, you can flip to a different view to show um, admittance. And in that view, you'll see uh, that the grid lines are, are uh, arcs of constant susceptance and the circles are circles of constant conductance. And here you can see dragging out uh, along a circle of constant conductance and likewise dragging along an arc of constant susceptance. Okay, so with this, uh, let's see what happens if we sweep out a shunt capacitance. Um, to do this, we're gonna first select the parallel equivalent circuit uh, and set it to zero capac capacitance. Uh, and note, uh, we're gonna put it at the reference impedance point. Um, then we'll sweep it out to one microfarad of capacitance. And we see that we get a, a circle of constant conductance traced out. Uh, and you can, you can confirm this by switching to the admittance view. And as you might expect, you can also trace out a shunt inductor and get a trace in the app that's similar to what Alan produces with his VNA as well. So next, Alan shows a nifty graphical trick with a Smith chart to convert to admittance. Um, so we're going to be working in terms of normalized impedance. Uh, so to make this easy, let's first just set the reference impedance in the app to be 1 ohm. Uh, now with that set, let's enter the value that Alan's going to convert, uh, 1.4 plus 0.8j as the impedance point. Um, now at this point, if you wanted to know the admittance in the app, you could just simply switch to the admittance view and you would see that it's um, 538.5 millisiemens minus 307.7 millisiemens. Um, but as Alan shows, you can draw a circle around the origin. Here we are going to enable a, a circle cursor, and then you bisect that uh, with a, um, a radial line cursor. And then as Alan shows, um, the admittance is just on the other side of that circle. Um, so I'm going to try to tap over there in the app, and I can't quite get there. Um, but what I, if I cheat and put in the actual numbers, uh, then you can see that you get the desired result. If you, and if you flip back to the admittance view, you'll actually see the original impedance numbers. Uh, but in short, what Alan has shown is that you can use the Smith chart as like a nomogram to, to calculate the reciprocal of a complex number. Uh, and uh, of course, since the app is a calculator itself, it can do the reciprocal of a complex number for you. So that completes Alan's first video showing the basics of Smith charts. Um, so next we're gonna move on to a follow-on video of his and that gets into even more fun stuff. So we're gonna start by setting up a series load of 33 ohms followed by 220 picofarads, all driven at 14.2 megahertz, just like Alan has in his video. Uh, and instead of calculating the reactance, we're just gonna enter the three values and let the app calculate the reactance. Um, 
And you can see uh, that the reactance calculated is essentially the same negative 51 ohms shown by Allen. And here you can see if you look at where the app has plotted the impedance of this load in the Smith chart, you can see that it matches pretty much exactly the same place that Allen has plotted it on his Smith chart. So then next, Alan actually constructs one of these loads and measured it, measures it on his VNA. Um, in the app, I'm going to change the, uh, the grid lines to match Alan's VNA so we can just compare the two and they look pretty much the same. So then next, Alan enumerates many of the things that you could calculate to characterize this impedance. Um, and uh, one thing that you could immediately do with the impedance converter app is flip to the reflection coefficient view. Uh, and that's where you would see the reflection coefficient gamma, uh, and you would see its magnitude and phase, uh, and its real and imaginary parts. Um, and in fact, the Smith chart is really just a, uh, a plot of reflection coefficients. Um, and you can see uh, in this view in the app, you can see that the um, reflection coefficient has a magnitude of a little bit more than half, and the, the angle is negative 77 degrees. Now Alan shows how you can just simply read these values off the bottom of the Smith chart as radially scaled parameters. Um, in Impedance Converter, uh, what I'm going to do is enable the transmission characterization view, uh, and it'll appear below the Smith chart, and then you can see the same calculated values there. Um, you can see that rho is calculated as 0.55, matching the value of 0.54 that Alan got. Um, and you can also see that Allen's angle of minus 76.4 was the same as what we saw earlier in the reflection coefficient view. Um, we can also see that the power reflection coefficient is 0.3, um, which means that 30% of the flower power is reflected, as Allen talks about. And you can also see the uh, transmission coefficient uh, in the same view in the app, showing that 70% of the power is transmitted. Um, you can see that the return loss calculated is um, 5.25 dB uh, in Alan's video, and it's about 5.2 in the app. It's pretty much the same stuff. Um, and you can see for SWR, Alan gets 3.4, and in the app it's calculated as somewhere between 3.4 and 3.5. Um, and also, SWR being a ratio, you can easily turn it into decibels. So um, it's 10.6 or 10.7, both according to Alan and the app. So next, Alan shows how to use the Smith chart to determine transmission line effects. Um, and Alan explains how the impedance, when you look through a transmission line, um, how the impedance changes based on the line length, but the SWR itself doesn't change. Uh, so to start, let's go into the uh, settings in the app and enable the cursor controls um, and the transmission line length view. Um, and we're going to also enable infinite trace persistence. And now with this setup, we can just simply enable uh, the toggle to turn on the circle view that's centered on the origin to make a circle of constant SWR. Let's also enable the angle control while we're at it. Um, Alan explains how a full revolution around the chart is half a wavelength, and to get to the other side, um, it's a quarter wavelength. Uh, so let's um, use that trick to, to get to the other side of the circle. Um, so what we're going to first do is tap the zero button in the app to like set the zero point for where we're measuring wavelengths from. Um, and now if I enter a quarter wavelength, you can see that this gets us to the other side. Um, and this would have helped earlier uh, when I was trying to use that little trick to do um, the reciprocal of a complex number to get from impedance to admittance, but um, that's, that's how you could get to the other side. Okay, so now let's set up the frequency and wavelength so we can measure the effects of the impedance looking at the load via length of transmission line. Um, so we have the frequency set up to 14.2 megahertz as we had done earlier. Um, and you can see that the associated wavelength for this frequency is 21.13 meters, just like Alan calculated. Um, Alan is using coax that happens to have a velocity factor of about 0.66, and that's what he used in his calculations. So we'll, we'll go ahead and enter that same velocity factor into the app, um, and we can see its effect on the wavelength. Um, since propagation is slower in the coax, the wavelength is actually shortened to 13.94 meters, matching the 13.95 that Alan calculated. Um, 
And now um, Alan has one meter of coax in his video, so we're interested in that. So we'll put in one meter into the length field. Um, and you can see that the app calculates that the number of wavelengths associated with that one meter of length is 0 0.0717 wavelengths. Uh, so that matches pretty much exactly what Alan had. Um, so if you, um, if you temporarily disable the SWR circle, you can more easily see that um, by revising this length, uh, you can see that the, um, that the spot in the, in the Smith chart traced out um, uh, a trace that was pretty much underneath the SWR circle. Uh, and that matches what Alan has shown in his chart. And finally, if you take a look at what happens when Alan adds that one meter of length to, um, to his setup, um, it moves on his VNA over to the same place that the app is showing. Um, and furthermore, um, if you scroll up and you look at the impedance in the app, you can see that it matches what Alan has shown in the VNA, pretty much. And finally, one last point that Alan raises and also supported by the app is oftentimes you, you'll want to measure the, the length going towards the load or towards the generator, and that's controllable in the app where you can, um, the little button at the bottom that changes the direction that you're measuring length. Okay, so with that, that's the uh, end of Alan's second video. I want to thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you found this interesting and helpful. Uh, and I would doubly recommend you go back and watch Alan's videos because he is an expert on this stuff and he's got great explanations on how it all works. Um, even though I've been demo demoing this on an iPhone, it also is available for the iPad and also works on Silicon Macs. I, and if you're interested, the actual source code for all of this is in GitHub. So if you really want to look at how, it's, how it does it and how it calculates all these things, that's all in there in open source. All right. Thank you for watching.